So we're recording. Today's topic for solution raising is war. As Eric mentioned before we started recording, I am picking big topics that feel too big to tackle the solution raising. Um, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to come up with. Um, I'm going to start with just a little bit of a definition of war. Like, I don't think whatever we're creating is going to end all violence. I mean war very much as one government um, going to war with another government. Um, it also feels like there's maybe some civil war about to happen in the world. And I don't know if that, that might come up when we're talking. I don't know what the solution is we're going to come up with, whether it's something for civil war or something, whether we can even tackle it. So this part is the part where we share what the world currently looks like and can vent about war in general, because it's basically been around for all of human existence. So it feels like it's something that we couldn't possibly not have as humanity, much like poverty. And I think that we can get to a world where it's not the norm that our governments go and slaughter other people. But that's just my utopian ideals. I mean, I'll, I'll get us started just as I so often do and just sort of try and provide or we'll sort of explore a little bit of context around the world because war is a continuum, right? I mean, all out warfare, guns pointed at each other, missiles, blah, 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 blah. I mean, all of that, that's, that's all out kinetic warfare. But I mean, warfare can happen between two individuals as well, right? A feud between two people, two, like you and your sister could be said to be at war with each other to some degree, right? And, and, and so... You know, this this exists across all scales and at all levels of severity, and it's kind of a mindset. It's a it 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 it, it emerges from the us and them mindset, right? If there is no them, there's no one to go to war against, and so it's an, it's it's sort of an inevitable consequence of the notion of othering, um, and the notion of othering runs very 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 deep because I mean this is one of the way get game A works, right, is you create loyalty to your culture. And one of the primary ways of doing that is to create antipathy and fear towards those who are not our culture. And so this, this is very, very deep in our social programming. Um, so yeah, I mean, tackling war, as you said at the start, Jubilee, no way, obviously, you can tackle war on the level of governments firing missiles at each other, right? There's no way this, is, this runs. But possibly within the domain of the solution raising is going some way towards, oh, I don't know, showing how to get to other mindsets at a, at, a, at a less grand level, maybe, something like that, something like that. But yeah, wars everywhere is basically what I'm saying. We are at war with each other in all kinds of ways all the time. Yeah, and I think that's an important point. I do think we can tackle this at a government level. In fact, I think it's much easier somewhat to tackle this at a government level, even though we don't have the power on the government level. Um, then at a personal level, right? To solve all conflict that ever arises, no, but they're similar. And I think that what you said about the othering and the becoming, um, that a lot of what we're seeing is this othering. Like if you're a mask wearer, then you look at the people who aren't wearing masks, they're all selfish, they're all horrible. Um, and you, like that someone can actually represent an entire group, right? If you're in game B, I just had someone because of my MLM idea be like, this might show badly on all of game B. I'm like, I don't know if you know what game B is. Like it can't, like it's like, but, and that's like realizing when we're talking about a group of people and when we're talking about an individual, that if there's a group of protesters and one throws a brick in, how do you know it's, how do you know it's um, part of your group even, right? Even if someone is doing something that's bad, how do you know which group they're part of? It's so easy to have an age, an age of provocateur come in and disrupt things. And that isn't war, but it's war. It's like, that's how we get to war. It's how the civil war might be coming about with the election in the States. Like that, that there's these other people who are doing evil and they're not acting like me. And I'm gonna put them all into one group. And when one of them acts badly, it's all of them, right? One Mus or a handful of Muslims uh, flew a, a plane into a tower and it collapsed and now we have to go to war with with all the middle east it's well like, so they say so they say oh so they say <laughs> sure, sure. and so that is yes that there is to me tackling it at the government level is more attacking it at the attacking it at the corporate level that if we're not making landmines and weapons of mass destruction and weapons the huge planes and drones and doing that then there is no war. Like if people have to only go after each other with what we did in World War One, it's a different level than having this this gross technological advantage where you can like you know have people in a, in the West having 
control over drones going to kill other people and doing all of these things that are done for profit. We can see that it's done for profit. And part of my vent also that I definitely need to put in here is this idea we have about soldiers, that they're heroic, that they're there to, to like, well, America, like, we got it, like, look after America. It's like, is that actually what you're doing? These people weren't coming to invade you. You're invading them and enforcing your values on other people. And I see it in Canada all the time, too, when it comes to November 11th, which is our Remembrance Day. And like, oh, look at everyone who fought for our rights. It's like, did they, did they fight for our rights? Is that actually mm. what happened? That's the rhetoric. That's the, and the people who go into it, I think, are there for good reasons. I think they actually I, are I, heroic. I want, I want to push back a little off. bit here. I want to push back a little bit here, Jubilee, because I mean, while, while I completely agree with you, the reasons that the soldiers were sent to war had nothing to do with honour and, and nationhood and all that, well, nationhood to a certain extent, but, you know, but the individual soldiers are acting absolutely out of a sense of honour and duty, you know what I mean, or, or most of them anyway, you know, people, people don't, and this is one of the, it's good actually that you, because this is, reminded me of the, the one of the truly evil things about our culture is that we take that nobility and bravery and willingness to sacrifice yourself for your brother and for your tribe or nation or whatever it might be, right? The, 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 you know, the, the, the most, um, uh, the highest traits that we have as human beings, taking that and turning it into acquisition of land money do you know what i mean like and and telling so it it, 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 it it's it's i don't know it's it, it feels like an abomination on a biblical scale right to take to take the most sacred divine highest things of which we are capable and turning them into the basest parts of our nature right there's, there's, there's something really 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 horrible there that war embodies yeah, absolutely. Matt, I'm going to invite you, if you would like to, to also share what you think of war currently. And I'm just going to go get my kid to be a little quieter. <laughs> <laughs> I only heard her uh, once, so she hasn't been bothered. She, uh, I only heard her once. <laughs> well, uh, first, I think war is bad. War bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, but uh, what's coming to mind is, um, I don't know, have you guys seen um, The Social Dilemma? Yeah, the yeah. Netflix documentary, and you know, tying that in with uh, Daniel Schmuchtenberger and his, you know, war on sense making and information warfare, and how our limbic systems are being hijacked, and how, you know, each of us has a personalized algorithm that can beat Gary Kasparov at chess, that's trying to beat us, and you know, maximize our time on site and you know, polarize us uh, in our in our views towards our our, our fellow humans. Um, that I think is the war that's taking place, um, and I think that's kind of <clears throat> almost the generator function to what yeah. is yeah, yeah, yeah. what is <laughs> is causing the. Um, the, the uh, wars. yeah yeah or, or or at least at least now the the kind of impending civil war that, that could take place because i mean everyone wants to kill each other and everyone thinks they're right and everyone is so you know extreme and it, if if you were to change the you know incentive structure for the silicon valley companies and you know take their black box algorithms and pop them open and change them, um, I think you would see a lot of this stuff subside. Um, mm -hmm. I think it would be like, you know, the storm clouds disperse. Mm -hmm. And sure, I think some people would still be radicalized and whatnot. But I mean, if we don't fix that, there is no hope in trying to um, find solutions. So I think any solution, any solution will look like something in the form of um, building alternative sense-making networks with different technologies that are not built upon existing technology stacks of Silicon Valley or regulating the existing um, yeah, Silicon Valley companies, which yeah. I don't know how the hell you're going to do that. 
I don't know how you're going to do that, especially when you can target all of the regulators and sick Gary Kasparov on them and mm. mess up their sense making apparatus. How, how are you going to get the, the policymakers to make sense of the problem well enough to actually change? How are you going to get the people on board? So it, it, it's, a, it's a very hard problem to solve. Um, if there was a genie here and then you could grant me my wish, I would say, you know, bring these, bring these giants to their knees. But I don't know how you do that. <laughs> yeah, but you see, the thing is, other giants just pop up in their place, Matt. That's the problem. I mean, these are systemic problems, right? These, these individuals, the Jeff Bezos and whatever of this world, are just playing roles in, you know, a drama because the, the, the structure demands certain individuals to play those kinds of roles, right? It's, it, 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 you know, but people that call for their heads and whatever. I, I, I get it. You know what I mean? I mean, I get it. I feel it too, right? Yeah, but yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't actually accomplish anything. You know, well, how do you do it? How do you fix level. it? You, you, you've hit the nail on the head that until you can create an environment in which people who have, you know, people of good faith earnestly hold different opinions about stuff and, be, and, and a space mm -hmm. in which those differences of opinion can be explored and figured out and, and maybe some kind of synthesis comes to, you know what I mean? And until mm -hmm. the circumstances exist for that to happen, and my God, are we a billion miles away from that at the moment? Um, yeah, then, then you're absolutely right. Nothing else is actually a solution. All it is is something that one camp puts up and it gets fought over and gets adopted or not, but whichever happens, half of the people are pissed off about it, you know? I'm curious, though. You brought up an interesting point. You said, you know, like, okay, if we, you know, if we bring Facebook to their knees and Google to their knees, you know, Jeff Bezos is going to come along and just spin up another one and capture everybody's minds again. And so... If, if that's a reality, and then on the other hand, uh, it's a reality that um, um, the existing sense-making frameworks that people are subscribed to make it difficult to uh, make these policy changes and these legal changes, how, how do you, where's the hope? What do you do? How, how do you, how do you make any change? Exactly Sorry, I was just the hope is exactly the kind of thing you know that Jubilee and many others like that are doing is building stuff from the ground up and mm -hmm. simply replacing them, right? But but you know it's 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 a slow it's a slow thing and it's a snowball kind of thing and it does require it requires people who it requires people to actually participate in it right not just talk about it but actually participate in it and what, what, what and and hopefully hopefully at some point all of these things all of this space which is being explored by all of these people trying all of these different things out hopefully at some point all of those threads start to converge on a common attractor and and something coherent and big and powerful and and with reach and with a user base and influence and so on you know what i mean that, that, that emerges mm -hmm. from that because cultural capital is is the thing these days right i mean economic capital is actually secondary these days to cultural capital if you've got an audience if you've got people who will listen to you that is more powerful than having all the money in the world these days it is true. And I think that is like that we worry about the big, powerful people, the governments, the, the technology more than sh like people would rather sit around and complain about that than show up to a solution raising. Mm. That's a bigger problem. And it's not because I don't mm. think they don't want it's they don't know they exist and they don't they're like, like, you know, there were five to 10 people who were interested in this session. That's why I thought we'd have more. But it's like they're like war. We couldn't possibly. So why even tackle it? Right. And it's like, do I know that's why they didn't show up? No, but that feels like, like they're like, what arrogance that you think you can solve war in an hour. In fact, I just went and, sh and shushed my kid. Right. I was like, we're trying to solve war. She's like, you're not solving war. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I don't we'll think that's why they didn't with. show up. I mean, I think it, I think it's hard for people right now. And I mean, if you, if you look at, at, I mean, people are, are literally plugged into the matrix here, you know, on, on whatever on their social media feeds and it's it's really hard to you know rip yourself away from that and you know i don't know i mean it's 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 tough for people so
you've got it takes a great deal of discipline. I mean, Daniel talked about this, right? I mean, if you think about two people, one in, in say Portland and one in say Texas, right? The guy in Portland or the woman in Portland or whatever is getting this non-stop feed of black man shot by police, black man assaulted, <laughs> blah, 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 right? Was the guy in Texas is getting black man assaults white police officer, blah, 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 right? And, and so, mm -hmm. you know, this is all they see. This is what they think the news is, right? And so no wonder they're <laughs> up in arms against each other because I don't, do you know what I mean? You fucking yeah. cunts, you're killing one black person after another with impunity. No, you fucking cunts, you're assaulting police officers for no good reason. You know what I mean? And, 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 and it's no wonder these people are at each other's throats. You know, it's not, it's not actually their fault. You know, they, they, they've had their whole view of what's going on in the world narrowed down to that. And, and, and it's not their fault. They've, they've, they've been... Right. It's like, it's like it's like when I said, it, it, it's like, um, you know, it, it, they, they give this analogy a lot, but it's like everyone has this personal algorithm that is better than Gary Kasparov at chess. So everyone that wants to come to the solution raising meetings, they have to beat Gary Kasparov at chess just to unplug and get some mental clarity and to push through their anxiety, push through their depression, push through everything just to show up and not be crippled with anxiety and like talk and not want to fight or be filled with contention and stuff. <laughs> so you're saying what's actually happened is they've all been distracted by porn or gambling or cat pictures or whatever. Is that what you're saying? I'll check it or out just, or, or just they, they're, they're, they planned to come, but other things just distracted them before they got here. Yeah, but their, limbic, that, their mean, limbic system has been hijacked. So. But that is part of our problem is it's less like, do we have a social media problem? Absolutely. But everyone is trying to solve it is trying to solve it for the like unwashed masses instead of for themselves. Like you yeah, can unplug. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it, there's a very big difference between creating something that is voluntary, that is invitational and creating something that is like, this is the salute, right? Like, this is how we make sense. So everyone needs to make sense this way. Instead of asking, how do you make sense? How can we have that same new speed? How can we know what's actually going on in the world without changing it to us versus them? How do you actually know what is happening? And, um, and I'm sure we could talk about this and rant about our current state of affairs and war for, for more than an hour, but I will invite us because we're almost at the half an hour mark to share our beautiful vision of the future where we have solved war and what does that look like? It means that the conditions for violent conflict no longer exists and the violent conflict is no longer incentivized in any way i mean really the single most profitable activity that you can engage in in this planet is war i mean in the in the tanks and missiles and ships sense i mean you know it is, it is the single so you know it, it, to have an economic market system that actually incentivizes this activity above all is is, is somewhat absurd so clearly war doesn't end until but I, to a certain extent, I mean, I don't know what you guys think about this. Because you can't unring these bells, you can't uninvent the gun, you can't uninvent the nuclear device, you know what I mean? They, 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 once these things have come into the world, they're, they're, they're in the world for good. And so how do you go about managing that? Because in a world that is free of weapons, the one man that has the one remaining gun has complete power, right? So, the, you know, the, the, how do you... I mean, that's the ultimate prisoner's dilemma, isn't it? Because people have guns stashed and hoarded and in basements and blah, 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 buried all over the fucking place, right? So how do you deal with that problem? Because obviously a, a world without war, the, the, the perfect, the, the, you know, the beautiful future doesn't have people shooting each other, doesn't have people going to war, doesn't, doesn't have people entering violent conflict. Conflicts are resolved in constructive ways before it ever gets that far, right? And, and, and but... But how do you stop that handful of residual guns, which, because there are no others, make them super duper 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 powerful? Yeah, so we'll definitely discuss. I don't know if you can. <laughs> but what does the beautiful world look like, that where we have done that, right? Maybe we don't. Maybe we did destroy every last gun. Well, then we can three D print them. So that's like. Yeah. Not really <laughs> that's what I mean. You just can't uninvent. You can't. You can't just pretend that these things don't exist in the world. They're, they're once they're here, they're always here, and so you have to live within that reality, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe it isn't possible. I mean, maybe there will be always be, however 
well everything works and however good everyone's life is and however much you can you know there's no constraints on you know what you can do other than not going around killing people there will might may, may always be the odd person who for whatever reason wants to go around killing people i mean, maybe i don't know i don't know i'll share my beautiful version of the future which is you're right we can't necessarily get rid of every last gun but where we definitely stop mass producing um the weapons of war the missiles the <laughs> tanks the planes stop stop putting massive amounts of money into that stop bombing cities when that makes no sense and there isn't um systemic war there isn't our governments going to war with each other because we can see that makes no sense not economically not environmentally it makes rich people richer and it makes everybody else pay the price in the most horrific way and to be able to have access to that sense making apparatus so that we know what's going on in the world and what's being done in our name and because of us without being able to turn that blind eye without being able to say oh my my choice to buy this computer means there is a maybe a war going on in africa i don't know but like that those things are more more visible that we are connected on a global scale so that when there is war somewhere we are witnessing it and truly witnessing it because we all have cell phones and most places that are going through war have cell phones even if they don't have cell connection and finding the ability to witness each other and be able to say this is what's happening it can't be spun because we've we've um or it can be but when we've dealt with the agent provocateurs in a way that we know they exist and we're, we're working within that system we know our sense making can be fucked with so let's deal with that let's deal with like right how would we know it's true and then creating that instead of relying instead of you know what i mean three people getting together and creating a news source that we want 7.5 billion people to look at how do 10,000 people come together and create a news source that they trust and then they can extrapolate that to the rest of the population that is what these these are about. So that's a bit of, of it's definitely zero war. My beautiful world has zero governments going to war because their citizenry will not stand for it. So will there be one person who, who is like, hey, I know what we can do and takes up violence? Absolutely. And they might even be able to get a tiny group of people. But when people aren't in poverty and they're not being squished by by the powers that be constantly, you cannot get an army of people to, to take over someone else because what's the point? You're just going to destroy resources, not create them. You know, like as much as right now in the Middle East, it's a lot of, of Islam that's creating war, right? Like it's a lot of, um, it isn't, it's the poverty. It's the, it's the, like if, if people are looked after, they cannot be made into martyrs. They cannot be made into terrorists, no matter what your belief system is. Um, it's, you, can you get anyone? Yeah, of course you can get someone you can't get hundreds and thousands of people together and so that is anyway a bit of my beautiful future i would just say my beautiful future looks isn't isn't very grandiose it's i just kind of want to see things maybe like one percent better and then go from there maybe then we can do two percent three percent but let's get that 1% under our belts first. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'd like to see a world where, I mean, this feeling of civil war is very visceral to me right now. And I see it in relationships with family, friends, loved ones, and if we don't fix what's generating that, then um, it's gonna get pretty ugly. So I think that's kind of what's at the top of my mind right now. But uh, yeah. All right, thanks Matt. Uh, now we can switch over to the part where we actually solve things. What could we do with 10,000 people and $100,000 and um, tackle war and I think that we could tackle it from either end we could tackle it from the governmental end of tracking where they're spending money and what companies are they're spending money on the fact that this widget's worth ten thousand dollars when it freaking clearly is not the fact that this drone like tracking the, the actual what's happening that these people are being killed this place got demolished this place and doing it in a way that is um trustworthy that isn't done from Fox News isn't creating it, the US government or Canadian government isn't creating it, it's us creating it, or tackling it from the other end. Like you said, maybe my sister a little bit at war. What would it look like to solve that? What would it look like to 
deal with, okay, I have this tension that people don't want to wear masks and other people, want, you know, like, what does it actually look like? Because mandating them clearly isn't the answer. That's why we have this. <laughs> and yet there is this division and there is an effect that one group has on the other group, both. Um, mainly stress. Both groups cause stress on the other person, which is the worst thing you can do in a, in a pandemic is cause a bunch of stress on people because it makes them more susceptible to any disease. Having that conflict resolution at the individual level that is voluntary, having conflict resolution at the bigger level of like mask wearing, not mask wearing, where can we find our common ground? How would, how do we both get our needs met? Both groups without demonizing each other and saying you're the worst of the worst because you feel differently than me. Creating those to any of those tools, I think, would be powerful. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this helps. This is just a, this is a very personal example. Um, and around COVID, seeing as how we were talking about COVID, this is actually what I was going to talk to you about later, but you'll have a little bit of thinking time now. Um, but it fits very well here. So there's a person that I play glass bead games every week. We've come to know each other pretty well. I've known each other for a few months now. We've come to know each other pretty well. We have could not be, I don't think, much more diametrically opposed viewpoints on the whole COVID thing and, you know, the measures being taken by governments and blah, 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 blah. Pre pretty much every part of it, we, we disagree with each other from opposite directions. But we are both <clears throat> reasonable, intelligent people of good faith, and we are going to use this as an opportunity to do kind of exactly what you said and try some conflict resolution at an individual level because our last discussion although there was no animosity right there's no hard feelings but it did get quite heated and i certainly felt in myself and i expect jen felt the same way i felt a certain agitation right which means that there's something there that i need to deal with right i don't know exactly what it is but there's clearly something if i'm getting emotional during the course of this discussion when i have no you know personal investment in it right so why is it bringing up emotion so anyway the, the modality we're going to adopt is we're going to have three discussions the first one she's going to explain why she thinks how she thinks and i'm going to have the opportunity to ask questions not argue with her but ask questions so that i can gain complete clarity and understand <clears throat> so that i can explain back to her to her satisfaction that i have understood where she's coming from right then we'll have another conversation where exactly the opposite will happen right she'll do the same with me and then we'll have a third and final structured like a glass bead game right where we take turns we take two minute turns and we hash it out now that we've fully understood where the other person is coming from assuming that there is still disagreement it's possible that that process will lead to synthesis understanding and no further need to argue anymore because we get it and we've arrived at a place that we're both happy with right maybe but if not then a structured argument if you like taking two minute turns each, listening carefully, having already fully understood the other person, and see what that brings. I mean, I don't know, we haven't start, embarked on this process yet. We've agreed on it, but haven't embarked on it yet. But that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Sorry, go, sorry, Matt, go on, I'm done. Oh no, I just said that's beautiful. That's incredible. I think it's I think it's incredible that, that you're doing that with another human. I, I think if we all, if we all made that step, that's all we have to do to get us out of this mess. If, if, if we all just took that utmost personal responsibility in saying, I could be right, I could be wrong, but the important part is Oh no, there's no way I'm wrong, don't, there's no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this so she can see I'm right. I mean, clearly, that yeah. is what... doing this to convince yeah. her of her wrong. You're going to trap that, her. That, that's... It's just a big trap. That's what it is. It's an elaborate trap. Perfect, perfect. And I think that that is... Um, like I, with Together Tech, with Bentley and Adriel's projects of um, sense making, and Bentley is doing Reason Score, which is all about having an actual intellectual debate and getting the evidence on your side. And um, there's something that that's missing that you're talking about, and something also that that gives that this doesn't. It's like a debate's not going to work because it never really convinces somebody on one side, but it does get you clear more on the information and the logical side without the fallacies and without the bias. And then dealing with that emotional shit is the bigger part of like, wait, why do I feel so horrible that you're not willing to wear a mask or that I am wearing a mask or whatever it comes out to, right? That their government, like, you think that if people are voluntarily wearing masks, that somehow the government has way more power and, you know, like these kind of things. And so to be able to see it from somebody else's side 
is powerful and to be able to offer that to the world, to be able, I know in the game B space, I'm becoming less of an admin in the far as like, great, you two have a video conversation. You're misunderstanding each other. You guys need to get on an actual conversation because this isn't going to work this back and forth. And I try to hold that when I'm feeling tension with somebody, I try to reach out and have a real conversation because it has always been a powerful learning for me. And it generally repairs the relationship. There's only been two or three times out of the dozens I've done it where I'm like, oh my God, no, you really are an idiot, right? Or like, I come out more, more like it doesn't, it doesn't solve. I'm not like, oh yeah, I see the beauty in you. I'm like, oh, I don't, you just are never going to see this. Like, you just don't want to <laughs> see it. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> well, this is, this is another thing. And I mean, this is clearly something that speaks to something in me, right? Because um, my, and I can't help feeling, I'm not saying it's right, but I can't help feeling that anyone that does buy into yes, we should stay at home, we should keep our kids home from school, we should wear masks, you know what I mean? All of this kind of thing. I can't help feel that these people have been emotionally and intellectually hijacked and, and to a certain extent are being willfully ignorant of a whole bunch of information they're choosing to ignore in order to hold that position because if they were to actually admit that information in, then they couldn't possibly hold the opinions that they hold, right? And so it, 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 it irritates me that people seem to seem, and, and so this is, this is where my irritation comes from. And I, I, I don't think Jen is like that. I don't think you're like that, right? And so, uh, you know, yeah, there, there is something in me, as well as the argument itself, there is also something in me which I need to find that is reacting to all of this. Okay. Yeah, see, I, I, maybe I, forgive me if I sound like a broken record, but, well, sorry, what was her name, Jen? Is that? Jen, name? yeah. Yeah, so here's the thing. In my view, you know, ideology aside, and whether or not you're pro mask or, or against masks, you if if you're for masks, you know, okay, let me let me figure out a different way to say this. Um, the way people have formulated the opinions that they've um, that they've come to is through essentially social media and the internet right and they're subscribed to various feeds that are controlled by algorithms that have an interest in getting them to believe certain things and we've already established that these algorithms are way better than me way better than you and way better than her at they're they're being used against her and so you're you're playing with that algorithm that's that can beat Gary Kasparov at chess. And so to think that you're going to change somebody's mind, any progress that you make, um, the, net, the, the minute they go back on social media and they go, you know, you know, they, they consume their information, it's going to kind of muddy the waters and, and you know, and kind of pollute it. But that that's, makes that's sense. equally true of me, right? I mean, I choose exactly, what, exactly, yeah. Who I follow on Facebook and blah 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 blah. Not that I do a follow of anyone on Facebook, but yeah, no. I mean, that, that's, that's it's true of all of us, right? And this is this is the key point: is for us to, at an individual le le level, recognize that whether we believe it or not, whether we like it or not, almost certainly we have been hijacked, right? And mm -hmm. and you know, uh, and, and just accepting that, even though I don't believe I've been hijacked, I believe that I have a balanced view, right? I, I, I truthfully believe I have a balanced view and that I have actually looked at and listened to people from a wide variety of different viewpoints and different camps, right? And have a good understanding of a broad spectrum of the arguments. That's what I think. But who knows? I could be completely deceiving myself, right? And that what I watch has led me quite deliberately to that conclusion, this self-satisfied, smug, yeah, 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 there's nothing, there's no argument you have that I haven't already heard kind of thing, which is, which is, which is a bit how I feel. So there is, there is an arrogance that resides in me and I'm, 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 I'm hoping I can get underneath. I'm really hoping that Jen can open something up to me, which I really truly hadn't seen before, which does change my whole feeling and view of it. This is, this is actually my hope. I mean, I was joking before when I said the whole point I'm going into this is to change her mind, right? But I was only <laughs> half joking. I mean, there is right. a big yeah. part of me where, the, and I feel it and I know it, and I admit to it, that that is my desired outcome, right? And and I can't help that. That's not, I'm not proud of it. You know what I mean? It's not my highest mm -hmm. angels, but there is a big part of me that 
is what I want from this. But my, but my higher angels, which is what is prompting me to undergo this process, want to be changed and transformed by it, right? Thereby validating the power of the process, right? The, 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 mm -hmm. And of my own ability yes. to actually go into it with a mind open enough that it's willing to be changed. There's something that's coming up for me while you're sharing about this, which is like this arms race that exists in debates, right? Where it's like, I can, I can win because I'm smarter and I have, because either side could win, right? The mask debate or the non-mask debate, the virus, the government, the virus versus the government. Is the government overreaching? Yes. Can we argue with a virus? No. Like, that there's, there's both sides to it. Um, and yet it's this arms race of like, there's like Omega rule. Omega rule can only be invited, not invoked, right? I can't demand Omega rule from you. I can only offer it to you or, and request maybe that you use it with me, but I can't demand it. And that there are tools that, that like undo the arms race that are like that, right? That there's a certain level that you and Jen are willing to get together and have this glass feed game is awesome. What if she wasn't, right? There's a certain yeah. amount yeah, of yeah, yeah, willing, yeah. No, willing to deal with your own, Absolutely. your own inner shit, right? When you're willing to show up and be like, I know there's a part of me that's acting like a toddler right now, but I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> and you're willing to grow, right? Because I know I constantly feel that energy in me. I'm like, hmm, this is this feels like a tantrum more than a <laughs> more than productive. But if I go into any conversation to learn what I'm there to learn. I come out better. It doesn't matter what the other person does. And the more we can create systems that are like that, that are like, this isn't an arms race because I'm practicing Omega rule. And this is doing the admin part. It's like, they're not, I'm like, they don't need to. That's not the rule. You can practice it. And you practice it to the nth degree means that they don't need to. That's the irony. <laughs> and so that there's something broken about a debate because it's like, you can win it or lose it. Whereas there's something beautiful what you guys are doing, where even if someone wins the debate, it's just into debate. If you go in with the intention of you learning, then you come out better and that's all that needs to happen. And so dealing with that inner tension and inviting people to, because there's the other side that happens that I find, which is this arms race of knowledge. I think I've told the story about the salmon when I was in university, I mean, I looked into farmed salmon and it turned out neither side wanted to do the actual really cheap experiment that would prove whether the lice from the farmed salmon were hurting the wild salmon and neither side wanted to do it because they didn't want to find out they were wrong. And it's like that same level of ignorance happens time and time again, where it's like, are you here to get the truth? Or are you here to be right? Are you here to, and yet there's um, that, like, you have to lie on a job application because everyone else is lying on a job application. So if you show up and are truthful, you're going to look worse. And so there's something that, that you do. We just have to show up and tell the truth and allow the, the culture to catch up, even in this ecosystem of Facebook and Google and Amazon it's like, right, they're just perpetuating that, but we can create something better that is invitational, that it doesn't matter what the other people are doing. It only matters what you're doing. And that's the problem with the mask, no mask debate is it truly does matter what you're doing, right? Whichever side you're on, the people who are wearing masks, you're a sheep, you're letting our government well, take maybe, over. And the maybe, who aren't, maybe, maybe like it doesn't matter me. at all whether you wear a mask or not. You know what I mean? Like, look, think that this is what I mean. Even, even when you try to be like, open and reasonable, assumptions come into your speech, right? You can't help it. And so, yeah, no, it is, it is super difficult. It is super difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid to talk about this subject. <laughs> about well, horror uh, masks. <laughs> Let's well, not masks. masks. But, but, but the whole words. thing. I mean, the, 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 the whole, the, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fucking minefield. I mean, it's, not, it's, it's probably even worse now, a minefield, than, you know, the gender debate or even the race debate. I think the COVID debate is even, you know, it, it, oh my God. People. Uh, it's maddening. It really, it's, <laughs> you know, either absolutely everything the government says is a complete big stinking pile of bullshit and you can't believe any of it and don't trust those fuckers. And I have some sympathy for that view, I do, but nevertheless, it's extreme and absurd, right? And equally, everything they say is being told to us in good faith based on the best information that they have. And yeah, they're not perfect, but you know, they're doing the best they can. That also is rubbish, right? I mean, they're both, both of those are absolutely nonsensical positions to hold. Hey, Eric, can you, can you put a mask on right now? I don't want the droplets to come through. And, <laughs> and check me here, so. I've got like seven of them in my bathroom cabinet because every time <laughs> I go out, 
I forget to bring my mask, right? Because, I mean, I live in the middle of the country. I never, ever, ever have to wear a mask, except for <laughs> once a month I go shopping kind of thing. And every time I go, I forget my mask and I have to buy another one or scrounge another one or someone, whatever. And so I've accumulated seven masks now in my bathroom cabinet. All of them pretty home, much I, pristine, I have to say. <laughs> I went home to, uh, to uh, California a few months back and... Uh, every time I saw my mom, she was just stuffing my pockets with masks. Here, here, take more, take more. <laughs> more masks. Like, how more many masks. do you I am. Need? I, I don't, I am on the side of the, like, I'm on the side of biology. I'm a biologist and I understand that we don't understand this virus and it's brand new. And do I trust governments? Fuck no. I don't even trust the scientists because I don't think, I think they come out of a very broken game A system and we can't trust them. I also know that based on the statistics, because I understand statistics, like people are taking the number of people who are infected, dividing that by the number of, de or the death by that number, and being like, look, it's only killing one in a, one, less than one in 1%. And that's not the math. The math is the people who've recovered divided by, by the, or the total people that have been infected and recovered or died, the people who died divided by that. And that shows over 5%, and that is a deadly disease. And so it's like that these are the kind of things where it's like, but they lied to us. They told us to wear them. They told us not to. And we can see the information ecology playing out in real time. It doesn't matter what kind of side you're on. Everyone's actions affect everyone else, whether you're wearing them or whether you're not, whether it's affecting more people or less, whether it's spreading, whether it's not, our actions impact each other in a very real way. And yet, can we get everyone's needs met, right? I know we're kind of getting off topic because we're talking about masks instead of war, but this is our current war. Well, no, right? but we are at war over masks yeah. or not masks yeah. or whatever. This is this is a perfect example of non-kinetic warfare going on in the culture. I mean, this is part of the, this is one one battle being fought in the culture exactly. war, right? One of thousands of different battles simultaneously. And then being it feels fought. like the battle is is like, well, we need our governments to mandate masks, and it's like that's not going to work. Or we need our governments to step the fuck off and let everyone walk around naked with <laughs> coffee on everyone. It's like. Can we get our needs met? Can we do it without mandating? Because then it's about truth and sense making, right? What is the truth of this virus? The truth is science is never black and white and different things no, but, affect people differently. But then you end up with lynch mobs on the street, people going around with baseball bats demanding people wear their masks, right? Not, because, yes, exactly. You know, and that, what, that's the level. This is what you end up with when there's no official policy and people aren't used to mm -hmm. re taking responsibility and self-governance and all of that kind of thing. When people aren't used to it, you can't just foist it on them and expect it to work. You know what I mean? No, it's, it's about somewhat, what is the word? Segregation. Like, allowable segregation of like, what, okay, this grocery no store yeah, I mean, is that, masks, that, and that's... this grocery store is no masks. And yeah, yeah, this yeah. one, and, but then how do you deal with workers? Because workers are different. How, how do you deal, deal with people busy, how do you deal who with are highly street? susceptible to can't wear masks yeah, public space, themselves? Yeah, public See, so then you yeah, have an hour for them absolutely. to shop. <laughs> Some, something that the, the way I look at it is is kind of like uh, like again this to strike at the root. I think this all comes down to how the kind of information ecology works in our um, in our world and kind of how the existing institutional structures that that have you know taken control, whether that be you know governments or the Federal Reserve or the CDC or these 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 institutions are not exactly open source. Um, and there's not uh, very great ways of information verification. Uh, there's an expression uh, that goes a around a lot in the in the um, blockchain cryptocurrency space, and it, it says, uh, "Don't trust, verify." So, in a lot of these cases, when we find out information about whether that's COVID or financial data or whatever, how do we even know where that came from or, or whether or not that's accurate or, or I have to trust, trust some institution to tell me the specifics of the molecular makeup of the virus and this and that. It's like, okay, I might not be a biologist or a virologist or whatever, but I can find other biologists and virologists that I trust that can get that open source data and verify it. And until we have kind of that system of checks and balances to even test this information empirically, I see the whole debate over masks as just, it's, it's nonsense. 
it's nonsense. We we need it. We need to strike deeper and 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 figure out this stuff at the root before we even start debating whether or not we should wear masks or not because we don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah, so, and that's the level yeah. when I was talking about an arms race of like we could debate mm -hmm. that, and I could you know bring out this scientific could I I don't know, but like bring out this scientific study and this scientific study, and you could, and one of us would be better, and one of us would win that debate. But it's not getting to the heart of what you're talking about, right? Which is like, how do I know the truth? Mm -hmm. And I don't think we can trust our governments and the powers that be right now. That I know, and so I understand why people don't want to wear masks, and I'm not even so sure. I like it's like right, <laughs> that's not necessarily the most effective thing. I get annoyed every week when I watch Big Brother because the people come out and when they come out of the house with 13 people in it who've been sequestered for months, they have to wear a mask, but the host doesn't. I'm like, I don't think you understand what the fuck you're doing. Like, it's like, <laughs> she should be wearing the mask, not the contestant coming out. But these are the kind of things where it's like, is it, is it a security blanket that just makes me feel better? Or is it to protect the other people around me? And yeah. Yeah, anyway, we get mixed information, mixed information from the scientists, from the media, that the media is wearing masks and they don't wear it here. And it's just, it's ridiculous. And it's that information ecology that we have to get to, not this idea of like, you need to do your research. Well, no, because it doesn't fucking help. You know how much research I've done? A hell of a lot of research about my disabilities, about, about biology, because I happen to have that as my degree. And it doesn't help right. because I have to deal with a world of people who doesn't understand it, right? A well, world and you of can find math and biology. You, you can find studies to support whatever your view is. Yeah, so whether you're for or against. Exactly. So it, it, it doesn't matter. So unless you <laughs> unless you strike at the root and find just that initial way of verifying information, period. Mm -hmm. Unless you so do you that. start with a premise that you believe in, right? And then you hunt for information that supports it. And and then yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. And as you say, you can find pretty much something to support anything. Like have you seen those you know, are you familiar with James Lindsay and all those yeah, academic yeah, yeah. papers yeah. that I mean yeah. like look, case in point, they can just make whatever shit they want up and publish it. And, and then I mean, somebody some uses them, that. Oh, what, I can't remember the word was, but some of them got like commendations, right? Like exceptional yeah. work kind of Awards thing. Like, this is stuff. outstanding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about, but I like can, dogs. Like, like, like one of the studies was like somehow like saying that like dogs uh, propagated like rape culture or something in <laughs> dog parks. And so we should ban dog parks or something like that. So it's just great. It's just, it just shows how it's so easy to pollute the information ecology it's so easy to subvert it and and so and how profoundly polluted it already is right i mean how yes. little you can you yeah you just can't try you can't really trust anything there is the problem mm -hmm. i think that and so like, how do you build an epistemology when it is impossible to find reliable information how the fuck do you go about making any sense of anything and have any faith in the sense that i mean really you can only go by your own personal experience and build networks so that you can add to your own personal experience, the personal experience of other people whom you trust to relay that experience with high fidelity. And that has yeah. to be your sense. Yeah. That has to be your sense making web and anything that, that is outside the boundaries of that. Well, sorry, that's just mystery. Can't know anything about that. I think uh, I actually watched this a uh, couple weeks ago. It came across my feed. It was a video that uh, Jordan Hall did on, on his YouTube channel, you know how he does those little uh, yeah. little bits where he just uh, uh, explains some kind of uh, theory or concept. Um, and one of them was talking about things similar to what we're talking about, about how everyone, just the, the whole information ecology. And he was saying, he, he was kind of likening it unto the invention of the atomic bomb. And, and, and that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with this atomic bomb like magnitude of of destruction in the information ecology so at least that's that's what i got out of it but and and i'll send it to you guys it's interesting daniel i haven't listened to jordan's talk on that but daniel schmackberg talked about that a lot and i don't disagree that we should be looking at how we're polluting the information ecology but also it doesn't really help. Like it doesn't help so much to not pollute it because it's so polluted. We have to deal with it as it's polluted. Like we know there can be deep fakes. We know that there's gonna be bad actors and we know there's gonna be good actors acting in bad ways and bad actors acting in good ways. How can we make something we can trust, right? Which is very mm -hmm. different than how do I make something all of you can trust? You can't, 
because I don't trust well, that's, you. That's right? They might not trust me. On. No, no. Right. Is this what they're talking about? But then that's also I haven't heard that part of Daniel's thing. But I'm like, right. But it's very different if it's designed for Jordan and Daniel, who have a high sense making capacity anyway, versus not designed for them. The base in mind. Not, not designed for them. It's designed kind of as a news network, right? So as a broadcast news network, but a broadcast news network which has used um, high functioning, good faith, earnest people working together as a collective network to fact check and cross reference and synthesize and so on information, put it in the correct historical context, all of this kind of thing. And, and, you know, and so rather than having to read 20 books in order to gain the necessary context to properly understand this information, they will have people who will condense all of that context into a manageable document so that you can, with reasonable, um, ability to make sense of it, access this information in the proper context, right? This is the thing. I mean, information presented out of, and sometimes context, you know, to understand the context, you might need to understand 500 years of history to properly understand the context of, of this thing. And so as well as the story you get, and so this is what he's working on. And, and so you, you know, you know, providing proper curated, checked, relevant, contextualized information. Which God, now, I hope, because that is a much um, similar to what I came into the game B space looking to create. At the same time, depending on what that who an expert is, it can hurt it or help it. Because if you have to have a degree in physics to be able to talk about physics, then you have to have gone through a university degree in physics, which means you're already co-opted by the system instead of you having learned it yourself. You know what I mean? Like those are very different. So what you need is someone with a degree in physics who can understand the work that has that is you know the research paper that's well, being because a layman can't access the research paper, right? But then you also well, it, need some, you know informed let me have some understanding of the field enough that that person can then translate this into a form that they can understand ask questions make sure they've got the point of it and then they can translate it into language that the rest of us can understand sort of thing yeah. but see i think this is what this is what uh, i think um john verveke and guy sengstock and a lot of these people are doing with the concept of dialogos and yeah. because we don't know if we're going to get this, you know, special news broadcast network or whatever that that they're talking about creating. But but I think what we're doing here is a form of dialogos. And I think what you're attempting to do with Jen is is that, you know, because we each have a piece of the puzzle and we each have a corrupted piece of the puzzle. And if we can come to the table using rule omega and hash this out. Let me clean this off a little bit for you. You clean this off for me and we'll kind of polish this nice sphere of information and it, 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 it completes it. You know, it's like the, uh, it's like the, uh, the power Rangers getting together or captain, uh, captain planet. Remember that <laughs> everyone yeah, brings a piece exactly. of the puzzle exactly. and then it that summons this. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, but everyone brings a piece of the puzzle and then it, it forms this much more perfect, more powerful force to make sense of things. But anyway. All right. I know we got off topic for the majority of what we were talking about, but not off topic because it was very much in. No, it was a super interesting discussion. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Really enjoyed um, it. I would like to still do what we usually do at the end, though, which is what do you think is the most powerful thing we can do to move towards peace, away from war and towards peace with 10,000 people? and $100,000. Yeah, I mean, we never even really talked about that. Um, That's right. We talked about sense making. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea really with the 10,000 people and $100,000, but I, I guess some way of encouraging people to take more time and put more effort into understanding that with which they disagree. Not to agree with it, right, but just to understand it and understand why somebody else might think that way, right, even without ever any hope of agreeing with it ever, or even coming to a higher, res you know, agreeing to disagree when you actually both truly understand each other, I think is okay, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and that's unlikely to cause conflict, right, because you understand why you disagree with each other, you've been 
through it. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't fit in the 10,000, 100,000 thing, but, but that's, that's the key, I think, something like that. Well, yeah, I think I would say, I would say kind of a very, mine would be the sim, very similar to that and be kind of almost drop your opinions, drop your beliefs and just go try to talk to somebody and just try to understand them fully and be friends with them and try to push all of this stuff aside, push it all aside and, and just befriend somebody, you know? And I think if we all just did that, you know, 1% of the time, it would make everything a little better. Thank you, Matt. Um, my most powerful one that would go towards creating peace, I think is similar to what Daniel is creating, having a sense making apparatus that we can trust and use gets us a lot of the way because we don't then have to have that constant debate and or having a system that is conflict resolution, similar to what Eric and Jen are doing, but facilitated by technology, right? Where you can invite someone to that, right? You don't have to have them necessarily have the level of personal evolution or whatever it is that makes them aware they can do that and both willing to sit down that there's various levels and even potentially conflict resolution, even if it's one party, right? So if I want a conflict resolution, the person I'm in conflict with doesn't, there are ways I can still deal with that conflict that are going to get it out of my body and my learning out of it that don't require the other person and having those things available so you know where you can go for those, for those tools. And to tell you that you're right and they're wrong. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you. That's <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of that? Like finding your learning in it and not needing that, to yeah, admit the it to them. Though. Tell you, the, more, the more you can just go ahead and believe it and not have to deal with that shit. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to end the recording now and um, goodbye YouTube.